What's up guys, Gabriel Varga here. It looks like the fight world is becoming a legit circus. Coming up very soon, we have Ben Askren versus YouTuber Jake Paul. Now, don't get me wrong, Ben Askren, great champion. 1FC, many years undefeated, I believe, but not really a striker. So they had his open workout today, and I saw down in the comments as he was hitting pads, people going, whoa, we didn't expect this, he's looking pretty good. And I'm watching him going, oh gosh, I don't know, man. I think he has a lot of stuff that he could work on. So instead of making this video all about bashing Ben Askren, who is an amazing champion, I have nothing but respect for, I wanna go through and look at his pad work technique and help you guys learn, help you make adjustments, maybe note things that you weren't realizing you were doing or that are in correct that Ben Askren is doing and I don't really love that he's doing it on pad work and people are not correcting him. So today guys we're analyzing, we're dissecting Ben Askren's open pad work session. All right, guys, I want to set this episode up right away with the right vibe. I'm not here to bash Ben Askren and go, man, he's blowing it. Oh, awful punches, awful technique. I'm not here to lower him down. He's actually amazing in my mind. I've tried the transition from pure striker and then trying to learn wrestling in a very short period of time. Bellator goes, okay, you have 10 weeks, so here's your fight. And I tried to scramble and learn all the jujitsu and wrestling that I could. It was hard, and I have so much respect that he is going to a full boxing fight, even if it is against a YouTuber who's not really anything better than an okay amateur fighter. But still, like I said, we're trying to set this up on the right vibe. I want to make sure that you guys are learning. We're talking about elevating knowledge for other people, not about bashing down Ben. So with that being said, hit the like button guys, get subscribed if you haven't already, and let's move on. And I wanna start by talking about Ben Askren's jab during his pad work, when he's throwing it. And there's a couple things I really don't like about it. And I'll throw a clip up right now so you can see him working his jab. The first thing which I'm not a big fan of is the way it looks like he's really been utilizing the jab. At least he's throwing it lots in his pad work. But when he throws, it's tap, tap. He's throwing his double jab, but not bringing it back to the head. And a lot of people make what I call this mistake. They don't realize that when they see somebody, let's say like Floyd Mayweather, he's in a stance and he's pop pop. And he throws those two punches really fast and he doesn't draw back. Well, his head movement is exceptional. If he hits once, draws only back to here, he's not protected and he moves into a second punch. It's either because he knows he has the ability to move or he knows his opponent's guard is really high and he's just setting up something, but he knows the counter is not coming. In Ben's case, because he's throwing the double jab out and he's not drawing it back he's leaving his head open for a big wide counter right hand as that double jab comes his head is completely open over here and like I said it looks like it's a priority right now in his pad work and I don't love that it's being done in my mind incorrectly because if you look at the speed it takes me to throw the way he's throwing it's one two that's nice and fast but how much slower is it to draw back to the cheek where I go one two Okay, it's a tad bit slower, but you protect yourself properly in between. Now, the other thing I don't love with his jab is the way his elbow raises up before he throws. He comes up, he throws out. Now, some people do that incorrectly because they think it gives them more power, which it does. If I just keep my shoulders square and I go here or here, sure, you might be able to get more power, but generally people are doing that because they're not engaging their body correctly. And another disadvantage is it's a tell. You can see right away, as soon as the elbow raises, that this hand is coming up for the punch, unless you're using it as a fake, but I don't think he's honestly advanced enough of a striker to do that. So lifting up to throw out is gonna let your opponent know what is coming. And generally, like I said, it's not as much power behind it because people are not using their whole body to throw. They're just kind of, arm punching. Both easy corrections that could be made if it's something you do or you see somebody else doing, take the time to really, really sort that out. Now, as we were just mentioning, we don't see a whole lot of shoulder and hip movement in his jab. The only time I see an appropriate amount of shoulder and hip movement is when he throws his cross. He gets his hips from this sort of staggered position to square. That's about how much range of motion he has when he throws his cross, his shoulders are working, but he's not getting that massive crack on the shot because his shoulders are not twisting all the way, his hips are not rotating. When I go to throw towards you, it should be shoulder started in the back, shoulder takes the lead, right hip 
takes the lead. And when he throws his uppercuts and hooks, it's very stiff and very rigid. But again, that's probably something from years and years of wrestling, which is necessary to be one of the best wrestlers in the world. Changing to striking is completely different body mechanics. I'm not holding it against him. I'm just making sure you guys recognize that if you see somebody hitting pads and they're rigid like this, that's not correct. All the comments down on the side of the video when he was hitting the pads, it's open workout, people are going, whoa, he's doing so well. And I'm going, oh, you don't know anything about striking if you think this is good striking. Now, another thing you will note in his pad work is his hands are exceptionally low. He very rarely pulls them back to his cheeks. He throws the jab, it comes down. He throws the jab into the cross, it comes down. Everything's down here. Now, I do understand that if you are somebody who has on 10 ounce gloves all the time, hands here, are a good idea. When you have MMA gloves, which he's done his whole career with, hands down here might make more sense because it's more head movement, reliant because your hands blocking with those little four ounce gloves is not nearly as safe as with an eight or 10 ounce glove. But I've never really watched Ben Askren and be like, whoa, look at that guy's crazy head movement. I think a lot of times it's just more, he gets his head off the center line and goes for the shot. So him having his hands down here, I think is gonna be a bad idea because it will be very difficult for him to slip a whole bunch of shots without being able to shoot in. Now that leads me into another clip that we see here where he is you know, messing around with his pad holder and he does a little scramble shot and he goes to the back and it just sort of makes me think, ah, oh, is this something that he's going to do in the fight? And I wouldn't put it past him, especially if things get a little hectic and he's just getting a little uncomfortable. He just shoots and does a takedown. Yes, he'll get warned for it, but I think it's something that could very well happen. If he does it more than once, it could be trouble because then you're going to start losing points. But I'm sure he'll get a warning on the takedown. It actually happens more than you think in professional boxing where there are a couple takedowns. I've seen it numerous times. They just stand him back up, go, no, 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 don't do that again. So will Ben take down Jake Paul? Probably, I wouldn't put it past him. Something else that I'm noting on his pad work is his pitter patter pace. He's not banging really hard. And this concerns me because a lot of times when people do their pads like this, they either fight like that or they're not properly prepared. I like to think of pad work as an opportunity to go harder then the fight will be. That's when my pad pace is go, 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 go. Everything's nonstop. It's very rare where I'm just sitting there, you know, taking a little chill time, throwing a couple of light shots. I don't do that in the fight. Why would I do it in pad work? So for him to be touching, touching, crack the right hand occasionally, tap, tap. I hope he's been doing more than that. I did check out a little bit of pad work earlier in his camp and it didn't look like he was. But for anybody else out there, Pad work should be hard, not all the time hard, but you definitely need a lot of moments where you're pushing the pace, making your body get used to that pace that you're gonna have in the ring. Unless it's technical pad work, which sometimes certainly you can do. So guys, how does this fight play out? What do I think is gonna happen? I don't honestly know much about the YouTube guy. I've watched a couple of clips of him here and there and being like, yeah, he's okay, but he's not great. This fight shouldn't command this type of attention. But like I said, the fight world is a little bit of a circus right now. So a lot of what Ben Askren seems to be doing when he's sparring in the clips I've seen as he throws his punches, he kind of pushes his opponent up to the ring ropes, kind of holds him there with his forearms, tries to throw the occasional shot. I think clenching and pushing that fight very, very tight between the two opponents is going to be what's going to happen for Ben if he's able to make the fight go the way he wants. I think that's how it will play out for him, but I'm not super optimistic. I mean, I really hope that he wins. I definitely want the real fighter to come out victorious in this situation, but in all fairness to Ben, he is not a boxer. His striking is not high, high level. And I don't say that to take away from him, it's just a fact. His wrestling is so on point that he managed to get away without having very, very high level striking. That's amazing, no doubt. But put him in against somebody who's okay. I think this guy might be a little bit bigger than him. He has decent boxing, Jake Paul. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's decent. So if Jake Paul could not get bullied, manage to maintain the distance and not get caught with a shot in the first round, which I don't really see happening anyway, but he can make the fight go longer. I don't see it being a great night for Ben Askren. I also do not see this fight being very pretty. I have no interest in it whatsoever, you know, paying for a pay-per-view or watching it. I just don't care. If it was Ben Askren versus like a high-level jiu-jitsu fighter or something like that, I might be like, oh, okay, you know what? I'm more interested. I have a little bit of an issue with YouTubers coming in fighting other YouTubers. The, the whole world is so fascinated with it. We had that up in Canada. Our prime minister did a charity boxing event and people were so pumped like, oh, Justin Trudeau is boxing. This is amazing. And I was going, who cares? 
He's not a boxer. Let's leave this to the guys who are experts and you do your thing over there. That's just my opinion, guys. I will not be watching the event this weekend, but I was interested to see Ben hit the pad, see how he's doing in a new discipline. I wish him all the best in his upcoming fight. Amazing champion. I hope he does well. I hope he gets paid lots of money for this fight. Guys, how do you think this fight's gonna play out this weekend? Are you interested? Do you even care? Or if you watch it, who do you think is gonna come out victorious? Throw it in the comments below. Give the video a like, guys. Get subscribed if you haven't already. Train hard, guys, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.